Someone has to stop me. I'm getting out of control. It's more meat grinder mod. Only this one really is taking the cake. Every one minute, someone will be eliminated, starting at 12 minutes. One and all, welcome back to the community action. This game has several conk level players in it. We've sprinkled one or two goldies and a few unranked in there, but this is going to be a, a spicy one here. Um, so first elimination is going to come at 12 minutes. For those that have not seen Meat Grinder mod before, just to recap, the way it works is the player who's killed the least is going to be eliminated. How do we track what they've killed? By the value of the things they kill. So if you kill a villager, worth 50. If you kill a scout, worth 70. If you kill a knight, worth 240 resources. Your goal is to not be the lowest, but I've done something extra spicy here. Normally, when we've been playing this game mode, we reset the values when someone's eliminated. We have not done that here. Instead, your value will accrue across every single period. It only made sense, guys. Like, I'm giving them a maximum of 90 minutes in this game. This is going to be a free-for-all that is under 20 minutes long. <laughs> you don't get to say that often. We are, of course, going to be on Caillou's Creation, the minimap Dry Arabia, just so that we have the right size to make sure that this pacing is fair. And we've got some interesting players in the mix. Uh, we've got Arctic Jackal. Over here, we've got Rumpy coming in as well. Uh, Sormian. A lot of these people played in these already. Hosun, one of our modders who creates mods for us. Uh, Gully Deckle, our highest ranked player, I believe it is. Next to him is going to be Nomad, who's also a conk level player and a free for all officiado. Drunken Smuggler. And then finally rounding us out, we've also got Lamet coming in here. So I think everyone who playing, who's playing this, maybe Barb, Drunken Smuggler. I'm not sure if we had them in some free for alls before. All of them are, are known commodities in our community games. What is going on here? For a moment, I had to check. I thought that Gully was playing the Roos. He's not. He's just being something here. So this is going to be interesting to watch. I want to see how many people try to optimize getting some kills early instead of just greeting. I'm keeping an, especially an eye on Gully Deco because Gully is the type of player that will just greed out to the maximum. We've literally watched him get eliminated first in some of these games because he chooses to be a teensy tiny bit too greedy. And Byzantines is definitely a sieve that can provide the aggro. Now, Interesting thing that we do with our community games to make it fair is if people are platinum rank or below, they are allowed to pick their sieves because it only seems fair to them. Anyone above has to random. So that's the way we kind of balance it out to make it a little bit fairer. Um, on top of that, usually people should realize by that detail who is a high rank. If you pay attention to these community games, when you're getting a lobby and you see someone staying on random, alarm bell should be going off. That might be a big threat in the game. So nine minutes out. Rumpy has actually managed to find something. So Rumpy, where is he? He's up in the red. He must have killed a villager, right? Wait, with what? Did he sh Oh, he's playing English. <laughs> so that's the power of the English, guys. Survive the first round just by using your short bows. Looks like he probably sniped a villager of Arctic Jackals that was on the gold. Arctic on the way up into the village in the meantime. And this is pretty loose and risky to play the way Rumpy's done this. Wait, what is that lumber camp? For the straggler tree efficiency, guys. Looks like a little bit hesitant. Do I go for the northern line, the south line? This could get a little bit rough, actually, for them. Playing that far out your base, I'd honestly love to see Yumi. It's probably going to be Onibagisha coming out, though, from Arctic Jackal. And just a few of them could easily club down several villages. Meanwhile, elsewhere... What is this bloodbath? Lamet, he's the Chinese. He went for the Barbican Rush. <laughs> but the reaction out of Drunken Smuggler. No freaking way. He's not going to be able to deny it. Lamet sent everyone out for this play. Did he keep anyone at home? He kept two villagers at home. Oh my god. And now Drunken Smuggler just needs to get out of range. Now, funnily enough, if he actually left Shondart behind, she'd be able to tank a lot more of this. Drunken Smuggler's got to be happy with that, though. Lamet lost quite a lot. Idle time included, and now you're close to your base back to gathering sooner, right? The only real play here now for Lamet is to gather gold, and you don't have enough food workers at home to sustain that. So, pretty ugly circumstance for them. Mm. And no, you don't want to focus JD. Focusing JD is a mistake, because Jean d'Arc has 150 HP. She is so much harder to kill than villagers here, and she heals. It's the worst thing you can do at the early stage. Oh, oh my god, dude, really? No. No. <laughs> Drunken Smuggler, come on! Wait, is this Barbican in range of all the sheep as well? Lamette right now is the villain of this story. 
And just to clarify, the value of killing Jean Dark is nothing. Because she, she doesn't have a value associated with her. Uh, I need to talk to Rasselbock about that. We'll probably have to look to adding in her buyback costs, as that is what should really be happening. Um, that's something that needs to be included. So I'll, I'll try to bring that up to Rasselbock. So what this should really be is 100 resources, 250 resources, 500,000 resources. But right now, uh, Jean is just a throwaway unit. So Jean can be a little bit potent in this game mode. Big shout out to Rasselbot, by the way. He's been really receptive to feedback and operating real quick. Uh, he's been working together with me to kind of figure out the details on this, which I love to see. Ray coming in the meantime, Nomad. Actually striking the Gully's base. And Gully, he is being a greedy mother ducker. Look at him. <laughs> now, the important part for Nomad is to get out. No oh, I was about to say without losing a unit. He's at least going to save himself up 100 now, but that does mean that Gully Deckle has 70 resources worth of kills. So he's got a little bit of padding. It's not much here, though. The Sword Man should better contest. I mean, he's playing Mongols. I'd expect him to actually get some units out to rush with. Like, Keshix would be pretty good here. But so far, nothing really popping. And I don't think the buyback cost would be too much on Jean, right? Like, I, I, I disagree. I don't think it would be too much. A thousand resources sounds like a lot until you think about, like, the stage in the game that's happening and how easily you could lose four knights in similar situations, right? I, I think for this game mode, that actually might be absolutely fine for balancing John. So, golly, how are we looking in this game? Are we going to be cooking? Because right now, he has got no mercs, right? Like, he hasn't made a choice. Okay, he went into the Western contract. Lombos haven't come out yet. Needs to get some Limitane out, though. The problem is he's next to a French player, so you know you're going to get rushed by Knights here. And the thing is, he knew about this much earlier, right? Like when he contested the, door, uh, the deer area. So he knew that he was going to be up against heavy cav. Just seems like Gully chose to play the, t the turtley mode. The reason this can be efficient, by the way, is like the logic is if you're getting dove by the opponent, you're probably going to survive the elimination round because while they are killing, you are also killing in return. Like this dive right here into Drunken Smuggler's base that is already completely chalked, by the way. <laughs> Drunken Smuggler is at least going to get some more resources worth of kills here. Unfortunately... Drunken Smuggler is pretty much dead. <laughs> this is just brutal right now. I can't believe Nomad. It was already a hard enough game after what Lamette done, but this is just guaranteed that Drunken Smuggler is going to survive. <laughs> but I don't think he's going to be our champion at the end of everything. Some weird balls coming out from these two players. Looks like Arctic Jackal uh, got a little bit of trade back. Rumpy has found some additional kills, but it is going to be the Onobagishi and the Samurai we were talking about earlier. And Rumpy, what is... Wait, why is Rumpy still in the Dark Age? Wait, what? And why are the Magadai? <laughs> Wait, what? So Sormian built Magadai when his neighbor was an English player, which is just absurd to say out loud. They are now safe. Gully is the one facing elimination. Hosin does need to get some kills, though. He fast castled. Okay, this is actually a really good timing. In this matchup, Hosin can beat out the Japanese, uh, beat out the Byzantines, rather. Japanese just spam very effectively at the stage in the game. They're a Zergi Sith, and they will out Zerg a 2 TC build from the Byzantines, especially when you remember this Byzantine player also was idled up by Nomad. Can you imagine if, like, Gully is going to be first out here? I mean, realistically, these knights could make it happen. He tries for a sneaky pick. However, this may limit on it. I don't really feel like Nomad needs to be this hesitant. He actually just saved Gully. Gully now up to 310. Hosin needs to make a move. Is he going to take the the easy choice here? Sormin, who should be weak against this. Or is he going to try to contest Gully directly? I feel like you want to deal with Gully, right? Like, taking out the weaker players seems logical, but it's just giving Gully more time to get away with his greedy approach. And here's the thing, like if I'm in a game like this, I don't have God Vision. Remember, they can't see each other, they can only see this info. I'm gonna be thinking, oh, it's another game where Gully doesn't have much in the way of points. He's booming again. He always does these booms. We've seen it before, we've literally seen him go out first because he'd done a Marley and Cow boom and forgot the time and then got dodged. It's kind of a similar thing happening here in the Byzantine form, right? With the double TC. So I hope they kind of sniff this out. Otherwise, Gully's gonna have a very strong position to move forward into a later phase. But remember, you're not safe for long. Being second from last is terrible here, considering that that would mean in three minutes time you'd be eliminated. <laughs> this game is going to be so fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for it to just kick up. This is going to be absolutely mind-boggling. Like, Drunken Smuggler 
might actually survive quite a few rounds <laughs> because of the way we formatted this. Reminder that it's not going to reset. The moment that a player is eliminated here, these scores will remain. And then the next player gets eliminated a minute afterwards. And then a minute afterwards. We're going to finish this game by, I believe it's going to be 19 minutes, right? Or 18. 18 minutes, I think it is. Jesus. <laughs> Magadai Clash. Oh, Hosin. Well, he saves himself quite nicely here. And Sormian comes along for the ride. That's a really good trade with the Magadai. Plus the fact that he's got the Keshiks and Hosin. Were those even upgraded? Okay, these are, they are vet. They just don't feel vet at all. I mean, they're vets in like, you know, I, I survived Nam and, and now like, you know, and all of a sudden you find out like they, they're just kind of winded. They're not ready to fight, but they've given up. That kind of feeling. The you weren't there feeling. That, that Outside that though, there's nothing veteran about these guys. They look like freshies off the line. Golly's in last place, guys. Oh my god, it's happening. Oh my god, it's happening. He's going for Hosin. He needs to dive. Like, he all, he just needs to all-in send it. He can't even back away from this. Rumpy, other side, is, is second to last. Um, he's pretty much dead. If, if, oh my god. If he goes out before Rumpy, who has no units left, this would be absurd. Golly, he needs kills. He needs them ASAP. Villager's shifting away. Hosin just needs to not react. This is the best thing he can do is just back away. Instead, he's going to go in. Why? Wait, what? Why? Hosin? No, are you kidding me, Gully? 15 seconds from elimination saves himself. And Rumpy has nothing left to give. Just a handful of villagers on the berry. So our Dark Age player is going to be going out first. Poor Rumpy. Chopped down first. Boom. And just like that, the timer resets. We are now a minute away from our next elimination. Nomad, Lamet, both at risk. Gully has insulated himself, though. Hosin gave him what he needed. It's crazy to think about as well. He could have cancelled the incomplete structure and backed away. He didn't. Wallow now coming in because it looks like pressure is coming from the north side. Sormian looking for more points. This is interesting because when you've got a player that's half dead, you're going to get this all in from two other players to try and accrue as much points off it, right? Because it's easy trades. It's free points to build. You're using him as a blood bank right now. You're a filthy vampire. Trying to drain him dry. Moving in here. The relics are held at home. But I don't know what for. Hosen. Atrocious fight to have to take here. The Keshiks are going to reign supreme. Onabagisha at least helping out. But the Magadar can just kite this to a victory. Hosen actually getting a good trade because of that detail. Because, of course, these are pricey units dying. But overall, Hosen is now in quite the pickle himself. Warlord's going to come out. That is going to be a push away. The TC definitely got a lot of value out of that. And we've had another player out. It's Nomad. He's gone. <laughs> Dude, this is insane. Two down already. Lamet ain't looking pretty. Where is their army, actually? Is this it? Okay, pull one out. I think we are going to be saying a farewell to Lamet next. You can't kill Rams with this army quick enough. It's 30 seconds away. <laughs> this is so insanely fast. I love it. Flash coming in. This would actually save him. Arctic Jackal about to keep Lamette alive. So this is the interesting thing. You might be like, oh, that's griefing another player because he's like feeding him. No, it, it's, it's the other way, actually. What he's doing with this dive is Arctic Jackal is trying to consolidate his position so he can win the entire tournament. <laughs> that's the way this works out. And now the owner, Bagisha, free to hit into those villages. He'll farm as much as possible before Lamette is out. Not bad here. Arctic Jackal now in second place. Drunken Smuggler. I do not know how the hell he done this. But somehow he's hung in there. He's got Jean level two. He's got the knights. Now he needs to find a target. But he needs to be... No, no, wait, no. <laughs> oh, no. Drunken smuggler didn't know. So just to, just to explain for people, you can only get points for eliminated... Uh, for, for, for live players. Eliminated players give no points. Their units are worth nothing. So that scout kills you saw done nothing for his resources. And Drunken Smuggler now has a problem. He needs to dive right away into Gully Deckel's base. Gully, meanwhile, diving into Hosen's. Hosen's standing his ground, but against Varangian, this is not going to work well. Wait, why the hell are they Yumi? Oh, God. He's going to win this, isn't he? How is he... Come on. Like, the... How does he get away with this again? Another player out. 
We have said farewell to Sean, and unfortunately, Arctic Jackal was looking for points there. He needs to dive straight towards Gully's base ASAP. <laughs> I think he's done this, dude. Like, Gully, there's no stopping it now, right? The, un the only contest is if Arctic Jackal can get in and start burning buildings ASAP. This is going to be tight for him. He's at least safe for another 1 minute and 30 seconds. Sormian has just given up on life, it seems. He needs to go in for a clash, and he needs it yesterday. He's only got 30 seconds. I mean, I would maneuver, would maneuver arrow straight away. Like, you need to maneuver arrow right now. This is going to be too late. <laughs> Brutal. That's another one out. Hosin, by the way, is actually in first place again with these Keshet kills. So it's kind of feeding him back in. However, this dive in. Sormi is desperate for a fight. <laughs> it's not going to be enough. They are going to be going out in fourth. Three left over. And here we go. Arctic Jackal now in. He needs to be quick about this. ASAP. Houses are not going to be worth much. He actually needs to fight. Gully Deckel's coming back now. Gully now has first place. Hosin, he needs to find a way to strike. He's just dead in the water right now. Arctic, this is about to be a really bad fight for him as well. The many Lombos and Varangian easily able to clash with this. Landsneck now even being added in. I mean, this is it, dude. This game is over. Gully Deckel. There's no comeback now. <laughs> I can't believe this filthy 2TC eco booming son of a gun got away with it again. When will they learn? Oh, it's a jackal definitely out. He's trickling troops across. It's just not going to be quick enough now. Hosin, he's the last hope. However, is it much of a hope? <laughs> because I'm pretty sure Gully could just A click the base and now win. Let me know what you think of this, by the way. Like, I, I think we need... I need an even smaller map. There's talk about Nomad getting added in. I would love to feel this game mode on a micro map. Because then it's not too big of a map to cross. We might try the 1.25 simulation speed because I think that helped a lot with maps this size as well. <laughs> this is quite interesting. It's like a completely different style of gameplay where you have to think about your early timing as well as your late. It's not just about barely surviving the early rounds. You could theoretically win the game off of your presence in the first rounds of eliminations. But this, this has now become undeniable. Gully Deco, 15 seconds out, almost a 3,000 resource lead. There's no contesting it. Hosen, he put up a good fight early on. He actually looked like the person who was going to be poised to take the big victory, but that north side fight may have cost him a bit too dearly. Gully Deco cruises through to the dump.